The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening everyone and I hope you've had a lovely day and for those of you who have come in from overseas to join us, um, hello whatever time it is over there. Welcome everyone, my name is Danette Fenton Menzies, um, I'm the Director of Learning at Magical Learning and I also on top of facilitating do coaching. One of the reasons we've offered this webinar is we've noticed a number of people with our clients who um, their resilience has dropped in the last little while. It's after Christmas it's already started to be a hectic year so we thought that at least once a month we'd try and offer some free webinars to give people some tips on how to live their life in a, a more fun way and a more enjoyable way. So I hope you enjoy today or tonight's um, webinar. It's only going to go for half an hour because I'm also conscious that in Australia for most people it's dinner time as well. So enjoy, um, I'll ask questions as we go along as well. So what we're going to be covering tonight is um, what is resilience and also why it's important to manage your resilience. It's, it's a really important thing. Um, we're going to look at when you would need to take action, so when you can identify when your uh, resilience is dropping, what steps you can take to actually bring your resilience back up. The other thing is um, when you're under, um, your resilience is low, you're generally under stress. So we talk about what happens to your brain when it it gets under stress and understanding that also can give you hints as to when your resilience is starting to drop. And then we're going to give some practical strategies on how to um, stay resilient and also handle stress better. So I hope you enjoy this, this evening's session. Now because it is about resilience I always like to start off by making sure that everyone's nice and calm. So what I'd like you to do is close your eyes and imagine that you're lying in a hammock under the tree that you just looked at. And I'd like you to take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out. So in and again and one more time. All right, you can open your eyes again. It's just always good when you start um, doing something new or you're trying to break up your days to just take a couple of deep breaths. It just helps calm your brain down. So what is resilience? Well really resilience is the ability to be able to recover quickly from difficulties, to have toughness. And I like to say resilience is about staying strong. And one thing, I've, I've run a number of resilience workshops and, and one of the things people often say is, oh, you know, when I'm low resilience I'm weak. And I say, well actually low resilience indicates to me that you've actually been too generous with yourself. So you've, you've given to lots of other people but you've forgotten about yourself. So one of the things that's critical for keeping your resilience high is, is self-nurturing and, and looking after yourself. So some of the things that can affect resilience, um, so your individual health and well-being. Um, so what you find is if, you know, often if you're a happy person and then you're sick for a little while, your resilience will take a bit of a hit because of that. Um, another thing that's really important with resilience is diet. So, um, you know, if you've found yourself eating lots of not so healthy food, you'll start to feel sluggish and, and again that can impact on your resilience. Um, another thing that can impact on it is your life history and your experiences. So, um, you know, if you haven't had such a great life to start with um, and you've had a number of perhaps not so positive experiences, that can obviously impact on your resilience. Also, how you're going with your friends and family. So sometimes what I see when people are very low resilience is they actually just want everyone to go away and so what happens is they don't connect as often as they perhaps used to with their family and friends and that can also lead to um, lower resilience. Another thing is how you actually view yourself. So, you know, when we're positive, you know, we usually feel good and our resilience is often quite high. What you tend to see when people's resilience drops is they tend to say, oh, you know, you idiot, how could you have done that? Oh, I'm so stupid. And they use language that perhaps isn't as positive as it would otherwise be. So it's important, again, to view yourself as positive. And I always like to say, you know, you're gorgeous just as you are. All of us are going through this journey called life and you know, every one of us is trying the best we can. So 
be mindful that you know if you hear yourself using not so great language about yourself that actually you're gorgeous just as you are and you're learning the experiences that you need to learn and that's okay. Another thing that can help with um, resilience is if you've got well developed problem solving skills that can help you as can good communication skills. Again when your resilience tends to drop what you find is it's harder to problem solve and often it's harder to communicate and when I talk through what the brain does when you um, are dealing with resilience and low resilience this will make sense as to why it is more difficult to problem solve particularly well and communicate well when your resilience is low. Another thing that's really important with resilience is actually learning to ask for help. Um, a lot of people don't like asking for help. They're very good at giving help and that's often why people's resilience is low because they've given lots of help to others. But they're not so keen to ask for help for themselves. And I always say, you know, when you're asking help from help for another person, you're actually giving them a, an opportunity to give you a gift, which is their time and their presence. So that's an important thing as well. So some of the things I see when I'm coaching people around um, when they're low resilience, if they're high resilience you'll often find they're excited about going to work, generally during life they're happy and upbeat, they'll have their ups and downs but mostly they're up, um, they'll enjoy hanging out with other people, big one is if I say to them okay tell me five or ten things you could do that make you feel good, they'll be able to come up with that list really quickly. That's very different when someone's low resilience, they'll often say to me, Danette, I can't remember the last time I felt good and I can't remember the last time I did anything that felt good. So what you tend to see is when, when people are low resilience, they don't enjoy work, they don't often enjoy their life, they'll struggle to be happy, they'll do things like road rage, um, etc. Big one is they'll find most other people annoying. So common language I hear when I'm coaching people when their resilience is low, and pardon my language but this is the words most people use, they'll come in to me and they'll say, Danette, everybody is pissing me off, pardon that language. Um, and then I'll ask the question, so when was the last time you did something fun or something that you enjoy? And the answer invariably is, I don't remember the last time I did something that was fun that I enjoyed. So it is really important if you're starting to show those symptoms to recognise that your resilience is starting to drop. Now I love quotes, so I just, throughout my presentation you'll find a couple of them and I quite like this one because it's quite funny. Now when should you take action? So when do I know if um, my resilience is dropping? Classic ones that I see, um, you know, you're exhausted, tired, um, you're angry a lot of the time, um, you don't want, like people being around or you know, often you just burst into tears for no reason at all and just think that was just a minor thing, how come I just lost it then? So you'll find that you don't feel so great. The other thing I constantly see with people with low resilience is they say to me, I just want to throw my mobile phone away, I want to turn off all the e emails and I just want to escape. So whether it's a beach like this gorgeous one here where no one else is there or they want to hide in a cave um, and they're classic examples of someone's given too much and now they just want to get away and look after themselves and that's what their body tells them, I want to get away, I'm tired of this. So your body's very wise and so I'd say you know if, if you're sick of your phone, you're sick of your emails, your, your body is starting to say to you, hey you know what, I need some time for me. And can I say it is, you're not weak, when your resilience is dropping it just means as I said you've been too generous to everyone else and you've forgotten yourself. So it is really important as soon as you start to notice that you're dropping to take action and if you need it um, certainly seek professional help. Whatever you do don't just keep um, thinking I'll tough it through, I'll tough it out, um, please ask for help and seek that help because the faster you deal with it the faster you're going to get over it. So I just want to briefly go through what happens to your brain when you're stressed and can I say low resilience you're going to be in high stress most of the time. Hang on, there we go. So our brain um, is made up of three parts and when we deal with st stress it impacts on these three parts. So the first part of our brain that was developed was the brain stem and that's 
right at the base of um, your skull and that's where all of the automatic functions happen. So the fact that you are sitting here listening to me and your heart is breathing away, sorry, heart is beating away and you're breathing and you're able to digest food etc is all because we have that brain stem. Without it we'd be in big trouble because you'd have to be sitting here thinking breathe, breathe, heartbeat etc. So that all happens automatically. Above that in your brain is the limbic system and that is basically the fight or flight part of our brain and that was designed to keep us alive. So it's a critical part of our brain and when stress happens that bit gets a lot of attention. I'll come back to that in a second. At the top of your brain, at the front of your brain, you have the neocortex and this is the part of your brain that is able to think and rationalise um, and obviously a critical part of dealing with life is a fully functioning neocortex. Now what happens under stress is very interesting. Your, your brain actually goes to the fight or the flight part often and how we'll see that is when someone's really stressed they might come across as aggressive which would be more the fight part of the brain acting up or some people their natural tendency is to flight so they'll go more passive and they'll be very quiet and not say anything. Now it's really interesting what happens to the brain when stress occurs. So our brain makes up 2% of our body mass but at any point in time our brain is using 20% of our body's energy and that body's energy is measured through our blood flow. Now what happens is um, obviously the automatic part of your brain, um, the brain stem gets its full share all the time. What happens under and then the, the rest of that energy is shared between the limbic and the neocortex. But as soon as we start getting stressed, what happens is the energy comes away from the neocortex, so the front, front logical part, and it goes back to the limbic system. And what you'll find is when we're really stressed, it's extremely difficult to think because the front thinking bit has shut down and it's gone all back to the limbic part or the reptilian part we'll often talk about it and your body's got lots of chemicals going through it like um, cortisol and adrenaline. So in that moment when that's happening it's actually very very difficult. So when you find yourself highly stressed you'll find it difficult to think and obviously because it's difficult to think you'll also find it difficult to make good decisions. So one of the things to remember is that the lower you go in terms of resilience the harder it is for you to actually think really well and it's why we always say go and talk to people because it allows you to um, get your brain back um, and be able to think um, and make good decisions. Here we go. So again another beautiful saying. So some of the things you can do to improve resilience, really important, connecting with others. So when you're feeling low resilient, um, and I was talking about in a meeting this afternoon, sometimes it's nice just to connect with someone and have a chat. And in coaching we call those um, chats, particularly when you just need to go blur at someone, a BMW moment, so a bitch moan and whine. And so it's good to connect with your friends or connect with someone independent and just go blur. What that allows your brain to do is Tell the brain, okay, it's not, there's no dinosaur coming to get me so I can get out of the fight or flight part and be able to use the neocortex and think more rationally. So being able to talk to someone, debrief, have a bit of a cry, have a rant and a rave, um, all of that is important in terms of improving your resilience. Critical one, and I say this to all the people I coach, is that please even when you're not feel, when you're feeling really high resilient, find 10 minutes each day and do something just for you, something that makes you f smile because when you do that, your resilience will stay high. It is really, really important. I once had this student, and I, I like to share this, um, who had really horrible family circumstances. Dad had a terminal disease. Um, Mum was seriously unwell and this person had been studying and she had to give that up and get a full-time job to support her family because of what was going on with her parents. And I watched her go from this person who at the start of the year was really you know, excited that she had a job and she was helping the family to halfway through the year she was exhausted and she was an emotional wreck. And so we sat and had a little chat with over a coffee and one of the things she loved was music. And so all she did different each day was when she drove to and from work, she played music and sang at the top of her lungs. And even by just doing that simple step, 
she um, again came back to resilient um, and at the end of the year she actually got engaged to a boyfriend and, and you know it all worked out really well for her so please if you do nothing else and get nothing else from this webinar if you can spend 10 minutes a day every day just doing something for yourself that makes you smile that will improve your resilience the other thing is I know a lot of you will be going through change and there's some change you can um, adapt to and there's some you just got to accept so learning to go you know what this too will pass in future and sometimes letting it go is, is again another good strategy sometimes too we just want to have a sense of control so for some people doing up to-do lists can really help another one and this is um, from a gentleman that I know some of the people on the um, webinar are familiar with a gentleman called Robin Sharma he talks about stop doing lists so sometimes when you're doing so much and your resilience is really low have a look at all those things you're doing and, and identify a couple that you should stop doing and give to someone else so you can free up time to look after yourself really important one is getting more sleep most of us are sleep deprived and um, when you sleep deprived the neocortex doesn't work nearly as well so you're thinking part of your brain so get more sleep go to bed a little bit earlier obviously really important is asking others for help um, and you know people are always willing to help and if the first person says no I can't their resilience is probably low to ask another person don't give up till someone helps you Another one a really lovely friend of mine told me about when he went on a course and they were talking about resilience is connecting with your faith so you have a, if you have a particular faith that you follow then that connection can also help you with your resilience. I love this one and, and I try to do this every day for at least 10 to 20 minutes disconnect from all technology um, and just basically create some quiet space in your day to just enjoy and be present so here there's someone out in the garden um, it could be just having a bath or a shower but just get away from everything and just be quiet the other thing that's really important is to, to think back you know when your resilience was high what were you doing in the past when your resilience started to drop what might have caused that as well um, so learning from your past can really help with resilience and strategies that work to keep keep doing those the other thing is um, sometimes because we are often very generous we are very good at helping others but very not so great at asking for our own needs and wants to be met but it's really important to understand yourself and what your needs and wants are and then being able to communicate those with your loved ones and those around you so there's a thing called emotional intelligence and, and every single day all of us feel emotions um, so whether you're aware of it or not now obviously when you feel strong emotions at some stage you will become aware of them so if you're angry or cross etc sometimes we're just nice and calm and that's a nice place to be if, if you are resilient so right now I just like you to stop for a second and just hone in on your body and think what emotion am I feeling at the moment because emotions tell us something emotions basically identify particularly strong emotions um, our needs and our wants so for example in this slide you'll see there's a very happy girl and she's very happy because she's going to a party with presents um, and probably her party with presents so in that case she's she's very happy girl but if you look at the next slide we've got a very unhappy young man because he's about to get a needle and really what he wants is to not have a needle uh, but in this case uh, perhaps he needs immunization who knows so um, but when you feel those strong emotions underneath it there is generally a need or want that um, you need satisfied and so being able to understand this emotion and then ask yourself what's the need or want can be a really empowering tool now obviously when you feel emotions um, sometimes well they'll always impact on you but sometimes they'll also impact on others so what you'll find when you're low resilient is um, you know people around you will notice that you're flat um, and if the people around you are a bit flat you're probably going to send each other down so um, 
you know, if you can do things to try and make yourself happy, that can help as well. But be aware your emotions, if, you, if you're feeling low, they're telling you something really important. And in the case of low resilience, it's, hey, I need a bit of self-love, self-nurturing. So always think about when you feel a strong emotion, then ask yourself the question, what is the need or want that I haven't yet had satisfied? And then work out strategies to get them met. And that's about communicating. So you could say to a friend, perhaps you're having a bad day, would it be possible to give me a hug? Or would it be possible if I could just talk to you for five minutes, I just need to go blur to someone? Um, and if they say, look, I'm really busy um, and they don't have time, you know, go find someone else, don't, don't give up. Because what you see is when we fail to communicate our needs and wants, it generally leads to us being unhappy and stressed and obviously over time if we don't get those needs and wants met, um, then our resilience drops. Now, all of my friends who know me know what a bath person I am, so I just couldn't resist putting that particular quote in our slides. Now, just something to think about in terms of handling stress. What are some things that can assist me with handling stress and therefore keeping my resilience high? So obviously enjoying yourself out in the sun is nice, a bit of vitamin D every day, not for too long. Really important, and you'll notice we started off our session with this, a couple of deep breaths. When you breathe deeply, it says to your brain and your body, okay, it's safe, and it'll actually help bring the blood back up to the neocortex because remember when we're stressed it takes the blood away or the blood flow away from the neocortex or the thinking part of our brain and puts it back in the reptilian part. So when you take a couple of deep breaths um, that tells the brain it's okay and it'll start thinking again. Another great thing you'll often hear when people are really stressed people will say go for a walk. And that's actually great advice because when you're walking, obviously the blood's flowing and you're breathing deeper. So um, you know, just get up and go for a quick walk. If you can, get out in nature because that is so nurturing and it, it just makes you feel better. One thing that um, they're showing a lot more of, um, my husband and I study a lot around neuro leadership, so using your brain as a leader. And more and more research is showing that things such as exercise and eating well are critical. Now what you find when people are low resilience is they don't want to do exercise, they veg in front of the TV and they'll eat lots of junk food and lots of sugary food and lots of sugary drinks to try and keep themselves um, awake. One little tip that I would say is get up maybe five minutes earlier and go for a quick walk around the block. You'll find even that quick bit of exercise, five, ten minutes worth of exercise, will start to put lovely chemicals through your body and you'll start to feel better. So when you feel like giving up on that exercise, don't do it. Even if it's just a tiny little bit of exercise, that will make you feel good. And you know, don't give up all your sugar on one day or all your caffeine on one day, but start substituting. So you know, when you go for a sugary snack, perhaps eat some nuts if you're not allergic to them, or eat something healthy like pumpkin seeds that will give you that longer sustained energy. I've just got to press this button so you can hear this. So laughter is really important when you're dealing with stress. So the more you can laugh, the better. So if you're not at work, um, watching things like YouTube can be really helpful, as can the, the website TED. TED.com has lots of inspiring videos, so I'd also encourage watching those. So it's not laughter so much, but being inspired. We've talked before about developing close relationships, and again, that's a critical factor in you know, helping with stress and also resilience. Sometimes you need to take a longer term approach and look at the goals and not what's happening currently. So remember sometimes you've just got to say this too shall pass and believe it. Really good thing that I read in a book was put things in perspective. So in five days, five weeks, five months, five years, will I really feel this excitable about this particular thing? So getting that perspective. So maybe yes, it's, it's really bad now, but you know what, in five days time, it's not going to be that important, so let it go. Other thing that's really important is to focus on what you can actually control. 
the only thing you can actually control, it's very unfortunate, is that we can only control ourselves. So when you find yourself getting really worked up because someone else isn't doing something, remember other than giving them a little bit of feedback, the only thing you can control is you and really is it worth you being stressed and putting bad chemicals through your body or is it better just to let it go and focus on the things that are much more important like your family, like your health, like your friends and like enjoying your work and doing the work that you want to do. The other thing that is a really good indicator that your stress and your resilience is dropping is how um, vivid your language is. So what I notice when I'm coaching people is when their resilience is low, they use really big language like, Danette, my life is a disaster. And I'll go, it's a problem. No, 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 you don't understand, it's a disaster. And I'll go, no, 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 it's a problem. So our language actually creates our experiences. So if you notice that you are using more negative language and it is big language like disaster, catastrophe, tone it down because that will actually change your experience and the bigger the words with that emotion, the harder you're going to find it. So another thing I'll often hear people say when their resilience is low is the word hard will come into pretty much every sentence they say. So again, if you find yourself doing that, tone it down um, and, and say, well, you know, I must be able to solve this, who do I need to talk to? And again, as you talk, that allows your brain to function better. Really important one is meditating. And I used to think that meditation, you had to be like the person on the left-hand side of the screen, so sitting there, legs crossed. Um, what I found out about meditation is really it's, it's about being present and it's also about watching what all the chatter that goes on in our mind. So even as I'm talking, your mind is chattering away. It's probably thinking it's nearly dinner time, etc. And a lot of the times when our resilience is low, we listen to that chatter way more than we should and that chatter is really negative. So meditation, and it can be just walking around, it can just be sitting quietly and just focusing on your breath, is really about letting all of that chatter go. And someone told me this great technique and it has to do with the photo on the right hand side. If you're finding yourself, your brain wandering off, wiggle your big toe. So I'd like all of you now just to wiggle your big toe because by doing that it actually brings you back into your body. So when you find yourself not being present, remember wiggle the toe, breathe deeply and just, ah, I'm back in my body. And again, like resilience with stress, please seek help. The faster you seek help, the better you're going to deal with it. So before we finish up for the night, because we've only got two more minutes to go, I'd just like you to spend that a minute thinking of two strategies that you're going to put in place to help build your resilience. And if anyone would like to um, put a strategy in the chat box, please go ahead because I'd love to share it with the rest of the audience. So if you've got a strategy, throw it in the chat box there. Aha, uh -huh. thank you Anish. So Anish talked about keep the workouts and meditation consistent. Yeah, and I'd absolutely agree with that advice. Ah, Maria, thank you. So Maria's going to watch her language. It's so important. <laughs> I do it too, Maria. <laughs> Laugh at yourself. Yes, that's so true. That's lovely. Thank you so much for sharing everyone. Now, I'm just really conscious of the time and I do, I do want to um, finish up on time. Is there any questions um, before we finish up? No? Well, can I say thank you all for um, attending. I'd love to say is if any of you have any ideas about um, webinars that you would like us to run, um, we're going to run at least one a month and um, I'd love to know any areas that you're interested in and also if this time was useful or you'd like another time. So 
If you get a chance, send us an email to learn at magicallearning.com. This session was recorded, so I will be sending you all a copy of it. And if there is anyone you think that could benefit from watching this webinar, please share it because this is part of our giving back to the community. So I wish you all a wonderful night and for those of you overseas, a lovely day. Um, and thank you all for attending and I'll hopefully talk to you all next month. Have a great night. Bye everyone.